80% of the world is too tight, they lack mobility, and they need to stretch and move more. 20% of the world has hypermobility, and on some degree, even to a pathological level, but they also have tight muscles, including sometimes tight hamstrings. So if you're watching this video, you've had tight, achy hamstrings, you've probably heard many, many times not to stretch, not to stretch your hamstrings. Your hamstrings don't need to be lengthened, they need to be strengthened, whatever that means. So if you're looking for a solution on how to fix that tight hamstring for good, this is the video for you. Hey, it's Coach Josh, proud Army veteran and current strength coach to strongman athletes and powerlifters, as well as strippers, bartenders, and everyone in between. And today, I help people who are suffering from injuries, suffering from age, or the disease of conventional thinking, overcome those to live their best life. Let's go. So if we're gonna talk about tight hamstrings or tight muscles in general, we gotta do a little muscle one-on-one and figure out how they work, what is going on with them. So when a muscle, whether it's a hamstring or a bicep, gets tight, it's not because it's short or long, it has nothing to do with the length, it has everything to do with the amount of work you're asking it to do against its antagonist or against an external load. So when I flex my bicep, yes, it gets short because I'm bending my elbow, but it's also working against the tricep, but the tricep also flexes when you do a bicep flex. So it's how much tension is on that muscle relative to the agonist, right? So the opposing muscle, in the case of the hamstring, it would be the hip flexors and the quads. So how much tension's on, on it against, from the agonist or an external load? So if you're asking a muscle to consistently do something it's not designed to do, it will get tight, it will get weak, and eventually it will cause problems. So my hamstring might be weak and tight, and I might want to stretch it. And the reason why this is a mistake is because if I pull that hamstring longer, it's already losing the battle against its antagonist. What happens is a stretch reflex is a cue, a neurological cue to relax a muscle, which feels really good in that moment. However, as that muscle relaxes, it loses the battle further. So that weak muscle that you have then stretched, told to relax, now it gets even weaker. It gets stretched further by its antagonist, and so it begins to lose sarcomeres. Muscle fibers begin to die, and that's when those tight muscles get painful. And symptoms like knee pain or even back pain can start to erupt when you stretch a tight and weak hamstring. So now you know what it's like to be trapped in the cycle of muscle imbalance. You have escalating consequences, and you have increasing discomfort in the moment. So, what do you do about that? Well, it's time to intercept the cycle of muscle imbalance and change the way that you use your joint and your body. This altered joint mechanics needs to be corrected. So we do that by lowering the stress on the muscle, in this case, the hamstring. So, I'm gonna use a neuromuscular tool called the assisted roll-up and I'm gonna do a little hamstring curl, and those two, two things put together are going to give me the juice that I need to change the way the hamstring works on my hip joint. So the assisted roll-up, I'll have 40 or 50 pounds or more if you're really tight, like me, I think I started with 80 the first time I did this. I'm going to tuck my chin to my chest, I'm gonna push my low back into the floor, I'm gonna roll up until I start to shake. See, I'm starting to shake right now. I find that shaky point, and then I relax. Tuck the chin, find the shaky point, start to vibrate. That's two, and I'm gonna do that for eight reps. Here we go. After eight reps, I'm gonna do the same thing from the top down, pull myself down into the floor push the low back into the floor, just the first two vertebrae, and then I'm gonna come up. So I'm gonna find that shaky point again. First two vertebrae reaching down, I already feel it. I'm starting to shake, come back up. I'll do that eight times. Because I'm taking the tension off of the body, it's allowing the, the hip flexors to relax, it's allowing the hamstring to take back over. We're changing the way we recruit the muscle, and then it's easier to get what we need done in every set. So I'll do some of those, and I'll also do 
some hip flexor stretches in between. So I'll push my shoelaces into the ground and I'll flex my glute and I'll open up my hips. That way I'm getting, I'm stretching and relaxing back to that old reflex, that stretch reflex, cueing the hip flexor to relax and then re-educating the hamstring. And I'll do that back and forth, three sets of eight, and then I will feel a lot different. I'll start to feel some sliding, some things moving around in the low back, maybe some popping in a good way. That's how I know I'm on the right track. When it comes to tight hamstrings, you have to change the way that you're recruiting them. You have to change the neuromuscular tension. You have to change the length tension relationship. And that is easier done than said because it's much harder to describe what to do. It's much easier to do a couple of crunches, again, a couple of hamstring curls. Do that and end the cycle of muscle imbalance and start to build muscle, help yourself burn fat so you can bring forth the warrior within.